Hi everyone. Thank you for coming to the Harvard Learning with Leaders presentation. So I'm Nika, and I'll be introducing our presentations for today. So throughout the past three days, we've been learning a lot about leadership, public speaking, and negotiation. I think I can speak for everyone when I say this has been an incredible experience. We've been learning so much, we created new bonds with our friends, and overall it was really fun. We played games such as Triple Speak and Traffic Light. We also took turns um, sharing our ideas and just talking about our learning experience here, which made us a better speaker and just a better leader in general. So personally, when I first came to this class, I realized how much of a task-oriented person I am. When I am put in groups, I always focus more on the task. I don't take time to really get to know my peers, which makes me not develop trust. And because of that, I tend to try to take all the workload on my own, which isn't always the best thing to do since it drains me, it wastes all the time, and it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. But when I came here, I learned to create new bonds with people since I didn't know most of the kids here, but now um, they're all my friends and I really enjoyed this experience. I am now trying to work on being more relationship-oriented um, person, but also still keeping up with my tasks and making sure everyone knows what to do. So I would like to say thank you to the mentors who have helped us um, throughout the past three days. Thank you for being so patient with us and just um, also getting to know us and trying to help us learn all these new things. So will you please come to the stage to um, explain the project? Thank you for the introduction. Um, my name is Mallory. I am a junior at Harvard. Hi, I'm John. I'm a senior at Harvard. And um, it was such a pleasure over these past three days to be able to teach all of these students. We were able to uh, work on things like public speaking, uh, leadership development, and a variety of games and exercises to get them to uh, work together. And we've really seen them grow over these past three days. Yeah, so throughout the, the program, we've had lots of different curriculum and games. But one of the biggest things that they've been working on is their projects. So they've had an hour over the last three days to work on these projects and come up with a new idea to pitch to me and John. So John and I are investors in these projects and we are really, really excited to see what they've come up with and also putting their public speaking um, practice into like into practice with these projects. So we are really excited to see what they've come up with. So with that, let's get started. We have group one coming up. Yes. Hello everyone, my name is Dendra. I'm Bronwyn. I'm Alex. I'm Edia. And for our last member, introducing Sean. <laughs> oh wait, I forgot, now that I'm skating, I forgot the fact that right after this, I have to go to a meeting. And after this, I also have to go basketballing with my friends. And after that, I have to go hiking. I booked an expensive hiking thing and I, I can't cancel it. How am I supposed to change out of these shoes when these are the only shoes that I have? Oh no, the dilemma. Well, not anymore. Introducing... The multi-shoe. What is the multi-shoe? What is it? So we named this product as the multi-shoe. Why is that? Because this product can be used multi-purpose and more specifically, a multi-purpose shoe. So you can use it in various situations. So the first one, portable vehicles. Why is it portable vehicles? Portable vehicles. So indeed, a bicycle is a practical vehicles for short distance riding, right? But sometimes, because it's large physic, it becomes difficult to put, to put it or park it. Therefore, we make this shoe into small, efficient, fast, and practical shape roller skate. And the second one is fits for hiking. 
how come? You could just chop it off and wear it. So if you want to go hiking, you can just arrange it and make it fit for hiking boots, right? And the third as and last one is sneaker cushioning. They have sneaker cushioning. So it's comfortable for running, basket, and everything. Thank you. Next. What it looks like. OK, so this shoe, um, we have these 3D designs provided by Sean. So the first thing is that the shoe has customizable colors so that anyone can pick their color or preference that they want. Um, and it has a comfortable base, so your, sh your foot will always remain very comfortable. And the material is very breathable. And the base is also very stable it's for the add-ons to click on and off of the shoe. And the bottom of the shoe has an easy and safe lock and unlock system that you click to take off the preferred add-on. So these add-ons include the roller blades that you can click on if you want to suddenly transport yourself somewhere. And then we have the sneaker cushioning for the shoe, which is designed by the Nike Air Max. And then we have the spikes for hiking. And the up above is the prototype of the shoe, which we made very comfortable and cushiony. And the bottom of the base shows how you can click on the preferred add-on and take it off whenever you'd like. Mechanics of the shoe. The add-ons have an easy slide and click system. The base is hard, so it fits every function, even roller skating. When you want to change the function, all you need to do is click the button at the back and slide it up. The lock system is very safe and it is meant to, it's meant to make sure that your feet stay stable and that it always stays on. Our inspiration here, which are the skate boots, is that we were able to attach normal shoes and then put these hard bases at the bottom and towards those hard bases that were small, we were able to put either shoes, like normal shoes that we were shown before, wheels and also hiking nails so that you can do multiple things and it'll stay still. So for the materials of the shoe, for the shoe itself we decided to go for thermoplastic polyurethane because it is lightweight, durable and easy to form and because it's also easy make, to make in factories because there are many ways of making it such as hot press, cold press, die cut and machine to make the midsoles and insert. Um, it's also available in a range of densities and formula, formulas. For the sneaker add-on we are using ethyl vinyl acetate and for the hike, hiking boots we are using stainless steel and for the roller skates, we're using acetyl plastic, polyurethane wheels, and the colors are customizable. To conclude, the shoes are a multi-purpose for many things. The problem that we have fixed with this is noticing that in this common area, many people ride bicycles and they don't know where to put it, so why not make it more portable? See, this too is what, to conclude, helps us with transportation, with sneakers, and many other things in one shoe. It is many shoes in one. This shoe allows you to go hiking, then change to roller skates for transport, and even cushioning for a sneaker. All while having breathable and comfortable material, the multi-shoe caters to everyone, everyone's footwear needs. Well, this is our citations. Well, not many. We could have cited. But yeah, thanks. Thanks for listening. Thank you.
Hello everyone, we are from group 2 and let me introduce myself. My name is Kenichi. I'm Alula. I'm Fidel. I'm Enzo. I'm Minso. And today we are going to be present we're going to be presenting our topic which is Read the Green Revolution. So what is our problem? As you may know, Jakarta has been experiencing pollution for many, many years, and more specifically, air pollution. Jakarta is actually um, ranked one of the world's top 10 most polluted cities in the world, and um, air pollution is basically a mix of harmful substances, gases, and compounds into the um, atmosphere, which harms our quality of life and our health. And while we can, we need to stop it. Even though the government has made sol solutions to it, we as citizens can also help. So our solution to the problem is by making the rooms above towers called polytunnels. So these poly polytunnels absorb carbon dioxide and uh, like ejects oxygen so that later we have better air quality and it also helps climate change. So you may be wondering, how does this work? So first, there's going to be a special vacuum right there, which is going to suck in all the air. And then there's going to be a filtration system, which separates it to be a carbon dioxide. Then the plants will take in the carbon dioxide, and then the plants will then take, go through out, and then we'll have air to, to, the, to the world. So uh, if you're wondering how it works at night and at how it works at day, so at daytime, we will get, we're going to be using sunlight to preserve it. And then during night time, since we have solar panels up there, we're going to reserve energy with using solar, solar panels so that this thing will work 24-7. Some plants that can be put in the tunnel could be erica palm, snake plant, spider plant, and peace lily because they can purify the air very well. And polytunnel c controls the temperature efficiently, which is vital for optimum growing conditions for plants. Moreover, they're easier to build and far less expensive than any other houses for growing plants like greenhouses. Next slide. Uh, <laughs> the normal prices ranges between $6,000 and $8,000. And w you may be asking why the prices? Well, the product serves as a uh, solution to pollution while also being a sleek decor for your buildings. Plus, it uh, it uh, took us money to put the technologies, the filters, the plants, the so solar panel, plus it's less expensive than a greenhouse. So that is all for our proposal. Thank you for listening. Hello, today we are going to be talking about Kosa Kita. My name is Dipta. Uh, my name is Aral. My name is Daisha. My name is Tara. And my name is Lukman. So the problems. These are some of the problems that we came up with. First is loss of tradition, educational inequality, cultural disconnection, community isolation, threat to identity, and lack of in-language learning platform. So these um, problems relate to each other because as time goes by, people um, start learning more um, bigger languages, major languages, international languages, and we kind of forget our home language, Indonesian language. So that's why we came up with this app. The solution. Before I get into that, what is Kosakita? What is it? Kosakita is a mobile <coughs> a mobile application that teaches the Indonesian language, not just the ordinary Indonesian language, but it teaches 
local dialects, dialects from smaller cities and smaller areas. Some of the features that is present in our app is dialect library. Our, we get our information from local experts to make sure our information is both credible and trusted. We also have interactive lessons, cultural context, audio pronunciation, dialogue and role play, interactive quizzes and games, and progress tracking. So you guys must be excited to see what our app looks like. So I'll pass the mic to Lukman to show you. Thank you. So this is what it looks like. Doesn't look like much, but it's beautiful, is it not? So if you look at the first image, there is a semicircle that you can drag up. And if you drag it up, you get to the second image. It has a selection of a course that you've picked. For example, we picked the Balinese language. And Yeah, and basically there will be a list of languages like Javanese, Balinese, Sudanese, and Achehnese. And then we will slowly be expanding to more and more languages as we go on. Next slide. And now, why is Kosakita our solution? Well, first, it promotes cultural preservation, builds a community inside the app so people can communicate with each other. There will be chats, and there will be uh, groups of people that will be learning the same language. Um, and educational empowerment, global awareness so that dialects from Indonesia, uh, people from around the world will be able to uh, not only learn the languages but interact with uh, people. For example, if you go to Bali, you can also speak Balinese to them, or if you go to Aceh, you can speak uh, Acehnese to them. So career opportunities for people who want to work and help uh, with the project and bridge to, local glo uh, to global communication. Next slide. And this will be our business model. So we will have a free uh, business model, but also we will have a subscription model. So people can pay monthly and get uh, full access to everything uh, in our app. We will also have in-app purchases for the games and so on and so forth. So if you want extra uh, inside the app, there will be in-app purchases. And also a percentage of our income or our profits will go to uh, rural schools, promoting cultural preservation, and community development. So with the profit, we can help communities preserve. Next up, you guys would probably be wondering on what's the impact if you guys have the application. Well, first, it's for us to um, easily communicate to our relatives that often speaks the native language, such as our grandparents, since they don't know much of English. And I believe nowadays that people barely speak Indonesian. So yeah, and next it helps you understand your true cultural identity and your backgrounds. So for example, if you're from Java, maybe you would learn the Javanese language alongside with um, the uh, personal information about it. Uh, helps you develop uh, memory and critical thinking alongside with, it's a comfort language that multi multiple people that should be using when you visit your island. Now that is Cosa Quita. Uh, embrace diversity, empower languages. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Neka. My name is Mikaela. I'm Fatir. I'm Devia. And I'm Sophia. And we are Strive. <laughs> Next slide. Okay. Uh, what is Strive? Strive is a company that supports uh, eco-friendly and also sustainable products. And we. Oh, sorry. And as the five founders of Strive, our vision for the company is to create ecological products that include technolo technological advancements that will reduce gas emission. And our mission is we are devoted to providing eco-friendly uh, transport supported with uh, clean technology. 
and we are the founders. <laughs> we have uh, Neika as the founder of Strive with Divya, and we are the founder of the products. Table of contents. Our so I'm going to talk to you guys about the issue and our goal for now. So one thing that we can all relate to right now is the air pollution in Jakarta. It's horrendous. Like as soon as I walk out like under the sun, I could feel all the particles sticking like to my skin and it feels disgusting. And don't we all feel sick? Like we all have sinuses. We yeah, we're all affected by it. And so one of the biggest contributions to the greenhouse gases is transportation. That's why we we want to con like change like our world of transportation and try, even though it's a small sp step, we still want to try make a little difference to the transportation world. So, this is Jakarta. We are the number one top pollute, like the top polluted city in worldwide. Our air pollution is the worst, and yeah. So the past nine years has been the hottest years like throughout our whole human history because of what we've been doing with climate change. That's the reason why it's been getting hotter and hotter every single year. So what do we aim with this? We aim to reduce the carbon emissions by taking one small step, that is by creating a solar powered golf cart. <laughs> it reduces gas and electricity costs because it doesn't run on any of those, it just runs on the sun. And if the sun shines, it works. It doesn't. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. So this is Bright Drive. Bright Drive, as you know, is a solar-powered golf cart that is made to help reduce uh, gas emissions. And our product uses sustainable and eco-friendly energy, as you know, from the solar panels. And this is our design for the. Uh, the top part, as you can see, includes the solar panel and also the back. And this an innovation is not only to contribute to saving the environment, but it's more it, it is more accommodating the guest of the golf course. This is another design. Uh, we specifically made this as well, so uh, the places in like golf car uh, golf courses won't be too affected by gas emissions, and the grass can still look greener. All right, as we know, solar panels are commonly used to generate electricity in houses. Even my house has a solar panel to generate the hot water, and not only my house, even in my complex, there are several other houses. So again, it's quite a common material. And for those science kids, or Indonesian as we called anak ipa, so solar panels are usually made of silicone or any other semiconductor. They are placed in a panel flame with a gas case. When it is exposed to sunlight, it is exposed to protons of sunlight, which creates electrons and creates an electric charge. So why do we use solar panels? So over the years, solar panel cross has dropped um, a lot, making it way more accessible for us and an incredible, an incredibly efficient thing to use. Solar panel quality and production has also improved since over the years we've been working on how to make the planet more greener, how to use more sustainable energy, and solar panel is one of the best ways. Transportation costs has also dropped, and it, uh, um, the solar panels do not harm the environment as it uses renewable energy and sustainable energy from the sun. Solar panels are also easy to find, like I've said, in my complex, we have several of those, even in my own house. So yeah, it's an incredibly effective thing to use. So again, solar panels are common, but not in golf companies. Um, I'm not saying this product hasn't been used anywhere all around the world, but for all the golfers, have you guys ever seen a golf cart powered by a solar panel in Indonesia? I don't think so. So the product has a specific target audience, which is, again, the golf course, and little competitions, as no one has done this in Indonesia yet. Um, this contributes in lowering the pollution in Indonesia, and it is also in high demand. OK, so according to Target at targeting.io, the majority of people interested in purchasing golf carts between the ages of 25 to 34 is 21.6%. 35 to 44, 21.61%, and 45 to 54 is 18.49%.
So basically, this graph tells us that the amount that the highest amount of people, the ages that purchase golf carts, are the ages of um, 35 to 44 years old. Market size. Our main target um, is obviously golf companies, but we are interested in also selling these this product to hotels, airports, beaches, and many more. So there isn't any information that we found on the amount of gol golf carts provided um, in hotels and beaches in Indonesia, but airports usually provide around 36 golf carts. Pricing. The market price for golf carts are usually around 100 million rupiah to the higher end models, which, is, which can go for the price of a house, which is 1.5 billion rupiah. And so we have adjusted our prices accordingly, and with recent international events, we hope it doesn't rise. And for the type, for a two-seater type, um, it costs 108 million rupiah, and for the seater, it costs um, 135 million rupiah. So these are our potential buyers in Jakarta and Indonesia. So first one is maybe parents would probably know the Ponakinda Golf Course. They're the most expensive, and they have a lot of international acknowledgement like the Indonesia Open and the Asian, uh, the Asian Games. So um, being like in the international world, they probably want to have like innovation to, to, like, spe like, to make, them, make themselves a bit more unique than the others. And secondly, the Sukarno Hatta Airport. So as you know, the Terminal 3 is pretty new, so, and their aim is to be one of like, the, most, like, the best airports around the world. We had that at first, and we lost it. So. Um, Perhaps having solar golf carts can help them um, like be a bit different. And second, and lastly, is this nine golf course? As you know, it's it's like in between of two malls, PS and Sensi. And like if you play there, you can feel like how humid and gross it feels. You can feel like all the sweat, and it's like it feels the air is just bad there. And you can you can even see, like you can't even see the skies. It's gray. <laughs> so perhaps having um, solar golf carts make a bit different and it's like it's most importantly it's a lot like very unique okay so for our future plans we would like to in incorporate solar panels in other forms of public transport such as buses and vans so basically there are already solar panel vehicles that exist um, outside of Indonesia but we want to focus on distributing these products in Indonesia since our problem is in Indonesia. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dara. I'm Rara. I'm Hazel. I'm Callan. I'm Russia. Are you ready to revolutionize the packaging industry and make a positive impact on the environment? Our innovative business idea focuses on producing high quality, eco friendly bags with recycled materials. By combining sustainability and product practicality, we're poised to create a product that not only meets the people's needs of consumers, but also contribute to a greener future. As you may know, Indonesia is a very large country, and it is one of the largest consumers of plastics. Yet, despite this, its waste management system is very limited. So these are our, our mission to improve. Our mission is to improve the industrial standards of the nation and reaching the environmental and sustainable vision of the future. Our vision. Our vision is to expand the usage of bioplastic bags within this country to reduce the usage of unrecyclable materials. Okay, 
Indonesia produces 3.2 million tons of, tra of unmanaged plastic waste a year, according to a data collection that was done around two years ago, so it has obviously increased since then. There's ha there has been a less than 1% of bioplastic use in Indonesia. However, surveys like in Tribune News and CNN Indonesia have proven have said that a lot of people are actually interested, but there are actually no current companies that sell them right now. I'll begin with a story. Last week, my mom, wa uh, my mom wants to cook, even though her cooking skill is kind of questionable at best. <laughs> I'm joking, she's an actual good cook. I'm not forced, all right? <laughs> I'm not forced. So I had to go to the groceries to shop for, I had to go to the supermarket to shop for the groceries. And when I was checking out, I asked for plastic. And they say, oh, we don't serve plastic anymore. And the problem is, I was carrying almost 20 kilograms of groceries. And I've tried paper bags. They, always, they fell down. And I had to go back carrying the items. And we tried car box. It broke again. After that, there's like the material is made out of cloth. And unfortunately, they only can carry five kilograms. And I had to carry like four of them. So our solution to this problem is centers around the production of bioplastic bags. Oh. As you can see here, there, these are the ways that we can make the bioplastic bags. We can recycle uh, plastic, we can use biodegradable additive when making normal plastic bags. We can also recycle infrastructures like maybe roads or, yeah, there's a lot we can use. Here are the process. Can we go back two slides? Yeah, thank you. So when Pamulong, I feel like we all know what Pamulong is. Like they usually collect trash and they give them to dumps for a hundred thousand or around $7,000 per ton. If our plan is to collect plastic by having them bring their plastic to us, we would give around 500,000 or $33 per ton. This is also our efforts to help because they're really below average wage. They earn around 20,000 per day, which is around less than 3 million per month, which is below the almost 5 million minimum wage of Indonesia. And our product, it kind of costs around 35 million rupiah per ton to make, and we're selling it for 50,000 per kilo, also counting like how much we're gonna pay our employees, and how are we going to get the land we have to make it. So estimated need is we need around 200 million rupiah, or around $13,000. This is also counting tax and everything in general. Here are the process to make bioplastic bags. We would start from selecting the materials hand selected from the pomolong or scavengers. After that, we would extract the, poly the biopolymer from the materials, blending them, and then we turn them into plastic using a process called plasticization, which is heating the material. We then would process the materials into shape. And we can pick what type of shape you want. We can make it into a bag, we can make it into a box, we can, yeah, any shape. As long as it's packaging. We cannot make like robots a car, all right? So after we cool it, it will lock into the final form, which cannot change, and it will be 10 times as durable as plastic bag. After the testing, we would sell it. Okay, so this leads to the marketing process, how we're going to market it, and how we're going to reach out to the Pomulungs and everything else. And we will pay the shop owners of the roadside stalls about 50k to set posters, because sometimes they're in the same area as the Pomulung, and this is the posters that we made. It's just an example. So we're going to reach out to them that way. And that therefore, they can give us like the materials, and then we can actually process it. And then we are also going to distribute our products, our bioplastic products, to places that support renewable items, such as ECAPS, which is actually a restaurant that is filled with sustainability. 
So our business is not just about selling bags. It's just presenting a sustainable lifestyle choice to consumers and business alike by championing the recycled materials, biodegradability, and eco-friendly practices, we are setting a new standard in the packaging industry. And we need 200 million rupees for you to invest in us and join us in shaping a greener future one bag at a time. And we are Promise Plastic. Thank you. Thank you. If there's any question, uh, we, before you clap, is there any question? Are there not? Come on, okay. I forgot your name, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, th that's gonna be easy for us because there's already like the the hub where people sell like scavenge stuff, like maybe plastic bottles and stuff like that. So the Pomolong, instead of going to those current existing s institution, you could say, they'll come to us. Just think about it as Gojek. Instead of delivering food, they'll deliver plastic to us at a higher, uh, what was it, price rate per kilo. Usually it costs 100 rupiah per kilo, I think, and we're going to pay 200. All right. Is there any question? Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Olga. I'm Rehan. I'm Kehara. And I'm Axel. So feel free to raise your hand for this. Jakarta is so incredibly hot. Have you guys ever went in your room hoping to enter a cold and chilly room only to enter a hotter room? Do you guys experience waiting forever until the temperature of your shower is hot? How many of you have ever wanted to enter your house whilst your family members are out and about leaving you locked out? Have you ever just want to party in your room but lack the colored lights that give the vibes in a party? Well, Eco Home is a perfect solution to all your problems. So the problem that we have identified is that today's busy urban lifestyle has led to a lot of people being too occupied to manage every single aspect of their household. People have work, studies, or other occupations that take a large portion of their time. I know most of the parents in the audience today probably have very busy daily schedules. Busy people might not pay attention to how much electricity they are using, which will lead to appliances being left turned on and electricity wasted. This is a common occurrence in my household. People might leave their lights on, AC on, or even their TVs on at night. I know that this, which does drive my dad crazy sometimes. Next slide. This problem appears in the methods of power generation that this electricity comes from. Despite advancements in green power, a lot of our electricity that we use are generated using uh, fossil fuels, which are very harmful to the environment. The household electricity consumption make up a significant percentage of our total carbon emissions. The EPA estimates that individual households emit upwards of 6,000 kilograms of CO2 every year. Yeah. Vision and mission. Our vision is to transform the homes around the world to be more eco-friendly by using products from the eco home and through eco home applications. Our mission is to create an app which encourages people to acknowledge the significance of carbon impact and its toll on humans' lives. Therefore, transform homes to better b become more eco-friendly. How exactly will we achieve our vision and our mission? EcoHome is an application that can control your smart home while monitoring the carbon impact in your homes. This aims to increase awareness of carbon emissions from your own homes, and we hope that we can help people refrain from emitting harmful levels of carbon impact from electronic usage. 
This application informs the users of their carbon footprint by displaying on the app itself, which you will see later, by displaying um, the number, of the number dis which represents the level of the carbon impact from your home. And this application will also have a feature where you can manage your smart home. Uh, alongside the application, EcoHome will also sell products which can be connected to the application. We will also sell products which you can connect to the app, such as light bulbs, water heaters, door locks, AC remotes, garden sprays, and several more. Why, will we, why are we doing this? Because the world has continued to grow to become much more dependent on technology, specifically your phones, your laptops, your iPads. So with our application, you can control everything from your bed, from your office, from your desk, from your computers. And it's so easy, especially because we are now, I mean, as you can see now, everyone's holding their phones. To monetize the application, we will show ads. And you can remove the ads by paying the subscription. The less the carbon emissions from your own homes, the higher discount will be of the subscription. And also to help with the funding, 60% of our profit will be given to organizations which help with carbon emission levels and 40% will be used to develop the app and sell products. So here are a few rough mockups of what the app could look like. So on the right there, that's the home screen. There will be a home bar where you can navigate through all of the screens. There is an often controlled devices where you can access and control some of the devices that you use often. At the top there, there's overall energy usage, which can be used to monitor how many uh, kilowatt hours of electricity that one uses and how many CO2, color, CO2 that the, your household is emitting. It can also be used to display the goals that you can try to set for yourself and to achieve. And for the right one here, you can control all your devices you can control a smart socket or a microwave or really anything that we might sell. The target audience for this application are homeowners that are too busy to manage their time. For example, homeowners who have a full-time job at the office, multitaskers, and to be specific, people from the age of 30 to 60. Having the ability to monitor carbon impact in your home is helpful for the homeowners who live in the city. Now let's move on to our marketing plan. So first of all, I just want to say that we came up with a slogan, which you can read there, Eco Home, protect the future while moving forward. Now, this slogan tells us that we can contribute to the fight against climate change, which is shown in protect the future, while at the same time taking a step into the future, which is while moving forward. So the promotion will be a combine of below the line and above the line marketing. The promotion will consist of three steps. The first one and the most basic one is by promoting this application to friends and family. So by doing this, we expect them to promote it to their other friends and family. And although the range of promotion isn't that large, it is a good way to start the promotion. The second step is by convincing busy people from first world countries to try out the product. Now, you might ask, why first world countries? First of all, it's because the most busiest people come from the first world countries and they also contribute the largest amounts of carbon. So, how will this work? It will be a type of mouth-to-mouth -mouth marketing because we will be talking to them, chatting to them, or emailing with them, or if even possible, face-to-face. -face. We'll be utilizing the phrase, a step into the future, because again, why would you not want to try something new, something you have never experienced before, something that tastes futuristic? When we were talking about them, talking to them, we'll be more biased to the benefits when informing them about it. We'll be talking how they can contribute to the fight against climate change, how it can make their life easy, how it can just, yeah, be future. And we will also be providing a reward for taking their time. Because again, if they want to try the product, they have to waste their time, which instead they could have used to do other productive things. And lastly, we'll also tell them about our vision and mi mission, which is the acknowledgement of possible contribution to fight against climate change. Now, the third step is to promote and collaborate with organizations and foundations, specifically the mainstream ones. Example is Greenpeace, Green Climate Fund, or even the World Wildlife Fund. And even though World Wildlife Fund doesn't focus solely on fighting climate change, 
it also contributes to protecting the future. So hence, yeah, that's the marketing plan. For our pricing, as part of our marketing, as part of our marketing, we'll be using penetration pricing to enter our appliances into the into the smart home market because there are a lot of there are already a lot of companies that does uh, smart home appliances like lights or controlled from radio controlled radio or like controlled from voices. After we build our loyal customer base, we can uh, increase our markup pricing to increase our profit. That's it. These are our works cited. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, hello everyone, good afternoon. I would like to thank all of the parents that have um, that are able to make it here and also for everyone that's watching from the live streaming. I'm kind of feeling this is kind of a bit of tense situation here, so I'm gonna loosen it up. Can everyone respond when I say hi, you guys say hello. And when I say hello, can you guys say hi? Can you do that? Okay, hi. Hello. Hi, hi, hello. Okay, great. First, um, this is um, group seven and we're gonna introduce ourselves. My name is Haskia. My name is Grasha. My name is Shade. And I'm Theo. Okay. Now, this is our problem. Now, um, knowing that most of people here are parents, I would like to ask a question. Um, when your children were young, have you ever had them come up to you and ask a really complicated question and like, you're like confused on how to respond? Can anyone like raise their hand when they've experienced that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. And we see that in a lot of parents, too. Um, and most often, parents think that children aren't capable of understanding these big world issues. But we have a second opinion on that. We actually think that children are perfectly capable of understanding these issues. They just need a different approach, an approach that's understandable and kind of translated to the kid level. Okay, now, what is, what is the solution that we're about to offer? We, um, we're trying to create a medium that will help children to understand world issues. And it's gonna be in the form of a book, and it's gonna explain it in a matter of perspective that is very accessible and easy to digest for very young children, especially kids, kids um, in the range of the age of six until 10, approximately. Okay. Now, world issues, there are a lot of issues going on in the world as we've seen in the previous presentations, but we're gonna focus on the issues of gender inequality. Why? Worldwide, there are a few of the data that I've collected here that make this issue very relevant, and it really um, has a close effect on young children. Worldwide, adolescent girls aged 10 to 14 are twice as likely to spend excessive hours on household chores than boys the same age. Globally, 24% of adolescent girls aged 15 to 19 are not in education, employment, or training compared to 13% of boys in the same age. And the third one is that self-harm is the third leading cause of death among adolescent girls aged 15 to 19 worldwide. So keep that in mind when we're having this conversation. So as we've said before, um, our product will be this book, and it, uh, a book set um, that contains around 10 to 15 books. Um, and the title of the whole book set will be Wor World Issues for Kids. Um, each book will contain a short story with illustrations based on the issue that it covers. And each book will also have uh, an each book will also be only a few pages long, since we do we do not want to make it too complicated for children to understand. Okay. 
Okay, so what will this book include? Well, first of all, it will definitely inclu include eye-catching illustrations because children are more, um, they, lead, they, they really like illustrations rather than really long, boring writing. It just appeals to them more and it's much more easier for them to, um, it's also important for them to visualize it in their head uh, before being able to read it. And then it's also simple and uh, it has simple and understandable language because, as I said, these are kids for a ranking from the age of 6 to 10. Therefore, that uh, the language needs to be really simple without many um, hard words. The last one uh, has a parent section. So basically, a parent section is just a short description, like a hypnosis, um, in the back of the book. And it's basically like the summary uh, of the contents of the book. And maybe also the, there could be disclaimers. Um, present in the parent section. Next. So here is a mock-up, uh, a sample of the book. So as you can see, the art style used is very simple, very cute, charming, and easily recognizable. So we chose this art style because we believe that children are uh, directed more towards uh, simple things in life, the simple things in life, and therefore that having um, a simple uh, art style would be um, really uh, good for them, easy for them to understand. The colors are also really bright because uh, we believe that children should also need a pop of color while reading our books. Um, so for the next thing that I would like to talk about is our target audience. So as we've mentioned before, um, the target audience is parents with children around the ages of six to ten. I'm sorry, this is uh, wrong. But um, this is our target audience because the book is more appealing to children of this age. And the way that this book is presented um, looks innocent enough for parents to be able to trust their children to read and understand these books. However, we understand that our market will be more effective towards more progressive parents who already understand the issue that we have uh, and that we're trying to solve with this book. Um, and for the second target audience, it is progress progressive educational institutions. Um, this is also our target audience because there are many educational institutions such as schools that, w that are interested in teaching children about these sensitive uh, subjects, but they do not have any form of media that might be safe enough for them to read and understand because a lot of um, school books are very complicated and have pages upon pages of just text, and we think that this would help a lot. So <laughs> what, what do we need, really? Like, what are we asking here? And why you should actually <laughs> invest in our product? So of course, we do need money. <laughs> we can't just start the company without anything, and we are hoping to get $100,000 from uh, from the investors, from the potential investors that are here today. So what will we use that money for? So here on screen is shown the budgeting of our project. 20% uh, will be used for marketing and sales. Another 20% will be used for research and development. And the remaining 60% will be used for materials and the production itself, of course. So, OK. I can already tell some parents here are a bit skeptical about our products. I'm not going to say anyone in particular, but you know. <laughs> so why kids can actually learn these, these complex topics is because kids, kids, despite the fact that they are children and the fact that we do need to simplify it, they are very much capable of learning about these things. And if we teach them these topics, they can be motivated to become future change makers and to be the change that our world needs. By unnecessarily shielding them from these topics, we are disallowing them from learning about our world and about themselves, especially for the issues regarding their sense of identity and sense of self. Children are our future. Let's make a future aware of our problems and one able to fix them. Thank you.
Okay, so what we're going to do now is bring um, each of the groups back up here to receive their certificate. And as we are presenting each group with their certificate, um, the leaders from Harvard will be sharing a little bit of feedback. Um, so if I can ask group one, Edia, Sean, Deandra, Bronwyn, and Alexander, can you please come and join us at the front? And let's give them a round of applause as they join us. Um, so for this group, we really appreciated your strong hook, uh, your creativity, and uh, the art that you incorporated into your presentation, as well as how you really considered the materials and the production aspect and really dove deep into that. Um, so thank you so much for your great work. Okay, so um, Idia, if you'd like to step forward and take your certificate. Let's give Idia a round of applause, please. Sean, you're up next. A round of applause for Sean, please. Followed by Deandra, if you'd like to step forward, take your certificate. Bronwyn, step forward, take your certificate. And Alexander, if you step forward. Thank you so much, Group One. And one final round of applause, why not? So, I'd like to invite group two up onto the stage, please. Fidel, Kinichi, Minso, Enzo, and Alulu, if you'd like to come to the front and hear a little bit of feedback for your fabulous presentation. Okay. Um, group two, you guys did a great job with coming up with a project that has an important social impact. Um, great problem choice. And we also want to recognize that it was quite imaginative and a great job, yeah all around and very great job with delivery as well okay so one by one Fidel if you'd like to step forward please and take your certificate a round of applause for Fidel please followed by Kenichi if you'd like to step forward Minso please step forward um, Alula and Enzo if you can step yeah, forward please one more round two. of applause for group two thank you so much Okay, group three, if you'd like to make your way to the stage, please. Uh, so this will be Adel, Tara, uh, Katriana, Dipta, and Lukman. Yes, for this group, we really appreciated how organized and well thought out your presentation was, as well as the wide breadth of issues that you tried to tackle, and you really uh, tackled them with great specificity. specificity excuse me. Um, and we also really loved your appeals to humor and emotion in the way that you presented your topic. So thank you so much. Fantastic. Arel, if you'd like to step forward, please, and take your certificate. Round of applause for Arel, please, followed by Tara. Please step forward and take yours. Um, Daisha, please step forward and take your certificate. Thank you. Dipta, please step forward and collect your certificate. Round of applause for Dipta, please. Followed by Lukman as well. Congratulations. Well done. Take a seat. Thank you. Okay, next group is group four. Sophia, Neka, Divya, Fatir, and Michaela, if you'd like to come and stand to the front, please. Yes, okay, all really quickly. There was, you guys did a great job with organizing your project. You outlined it and communicated the entire project very, very well, and it was quite innovative. So we really enjoyed your presentation, very clear and communicated and organized well. Okay, so Sophia, if you'd like to be the first to uh, step forward, round of applause for Sophia, please. Followed by Naka, please step forward and a round of applause, keep it going. Followed by Divya, please step forward, then Fatia, and then Michaela. Huge congratulations, well done. Okay, next group then, group five. So that is Dara, Rara, Hazel, Callan, and Rasha, if you'd like to come to the front and collect your certificates, please. Give them a round of applause as they come up. Let's, thank you. For this group, we appreciated how polished and confidence, confident and poised you were, and really the strength in which you spoke was uh, really amazing to us. We also loved your appeals to things like pathos, logos, and ethos, so thank you. Okay, so one by one, Dara, please step forward, take your certificate. Round of applause for Dara, please. Followed by Rara, step forward, please, Rara. <laughs> Followed by Hazel, take, uh, step forward, Hazel, please. Round of applause, please. Callan, take a step forward. And then Rasha, take a step forward. Huge congratulations, guys, well done. Okay, group six. Um, 
Kahara, Olga, Axel, and Raihan, please come and take your certificates. Round of applause, please, as group yeah. six join us at the front. All right, the Eco Home, quite innovative. You guys did a great job with innovation, very engaging presentation, and we enjoyed the idea. The business model was great. Yes. Okay, so one by one, Kahara, please step forward and take your certificate. Round of applause, please. Olga, step forward for your certificate. Axel, and also Raihan. Let's give everyone a round of applause, please. Good job, guys. Huge congratulations. Well done. Take a seat. And finally, Gracia, Theo, Sade, Saskia, come and join us at the front. And one more round of applause. For this group, we were so impressed with how engaging that you made this project and how you really considered the project scope and context and your own personal strengths and how you could really make this business work. So congratulations. Fantastic. Gracia, if you'd like to step forward, please. Well done. Uh, Theo, step forward, please. Keep the rounds of applause going. Sade, step forward. Um, and Saskia, fabulous. Well done, guys. Huge congratulations. Please take a seat. Okay, so we are pretty much coming to the end then of our three days. Um, it's really been an incredible journey watching your children grow. Um, uh, the, just the innovation, uh, the collaboration, the leadership, the communication, and the confidence. It's really been incredible. Um, and I think on behalf of myself here at Global Gia, I'd li really like to extend deep appreciation um, to John, to Mallory, and also for Akriti from Loan with Leaders. So I'd like to ask particularly the students, um, they've been asking you to stand up over the last three days. Uh, please stand up for one last time and give them a round of applause to express your appreciation. <laughs> Okay, and on that note, I'm just going to ask for one more stand-up. Can I ask the, stand the parents in the middle, could you please stand up? Could your students sit down? Okay, can you please turn, these guys turn this way? You guys turn this way and please give them a huge round of applause for all of the work that they've done. <laughs> Incredible. Thanks so much. Thank you. And on that note then, the Learn With Leaders Young Leadership Program in conjunction with HMCSF, yes I remembered, um, it's over and out for August. Look out for one coming up in January. Thank you so much. Have a great Sunday.